procedurally, we open up the donor and define the trachea. We define the arteries and the blood vessels coming off of the thyroid gland into the carotid artery and the internal jugular vein. Those are the vessels that we're going to hook up to. Those are the vessels that are going to nourish the graft. After dissecting out the trachea and the blood vessels, we make a decision right there. Are we ready to go? Is this something that we want to continue on with? And we made that decision because, frankly, it looked very good. The blood vessels were uh, well-defined. Um, the trachea length, we could, uh, you know, we, we could get exactly what we needed. And midway through, we make a decision to bring in the recipient. So that's when the green light goes on. Sonia comes into the room. We prepare her. Um, we opened her up, uh, removed the disease windpipe that was stented open with, with a tracheostomy, and prepare her blood vessels because we're going to do microvascular transfer, taking the graft with six or seven arterial and venous anastomoses and hooking up those blood vessels into the recipient using microsurgery. So when the graft comes out, we put that on ice. And that's called the cold ischemic time. And from that point on, we're under the clock. As many people know in transplantation, that time period where the graft doesn't have blood supply is a critical time period. And even more critical is the time that the graft is being actually sewn in to the recipient, which is called warm ischemic time. And because nobody has ever done this, we didn't have any idea how well or not well this graft would tolerate not having blood flow, ischemia. So we moved very quickly and with the help of you know, Dr. Miles and Dr. Kaufman and Dr. Di Maria on anesthesia, the team worked very quickly to get the graft in and then revascularize it. And in the revascularization, we have to hook up the arteries, which bring the blood to the graft, and the vein, which deliver the blood out from the graft very expeditiously. But I would say that in the 25, 28 years of, of, of practicing head and neck you know, surgery, there was probably nothing more exciting than releasing the blood vessels and watching the graft actually come alive and the entire length of the trachea all the way down to the lung uh, bleed, which means that it's, it's alive and it's, and it's well vascularized because that was the, uh, the biggest hurdle. That was the medical dogma for 60 years that you couldn't get the trachea revascularized. And, and that, that really um, was what made this possible.